The notion of innovation having to go below the radar screen, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very popularized notion. I mean, there's so many films, right, about teachers who take these risks and, and, and try new innovative things in the classroom and have huge success, but there's always, you know, the, the principal or the superintendent who's like the bad guy and who comes in and, you know, tries to shut it down because it's breaking rules. And, um, and you know, so there's always a lot of innovation going on. The question is, you know, why do those continue to be isolated cases? Why isn't there a bigger change in the educational system? And I think part of it is, is uh, notions of, of accountability and vulnerability. I mean, you have a lot of public pressure that comes from outside the system itself, from the general public. Uh, we're asking schools to be the custodians of our children. We're asking them to address a lot of problems that we're not handling at home or in our communities that's supposed to be handled by the schools. If the school, if a child comes to harm in a school system or even fails to move forward, the school system is held responsible, but in fact, they, they don't have control over a lot of that. It comes from the outside. It comes from other dysfunctional parts in the system. But because they're held accountable for things they actually can't control. Uh, there's, there's a lot of fear, I think, and a lot of uh, insistence on a rule set and, and you know, holding things constant because if held up to accusations of irresponsibility, what you have to uh, uh, resort to is that you know, here is your mandate, here are the rules, we followed all the rules. If you start experimenting, you have possibility of you know enormous change. But on the other hand, if something goes wrong, enormous culpability. So the miracle is that innovation continues. The most change happening all the time is in public health, and you know, and part of it is because um, I think that the, the general public is always sensitive to uh, things that could increase their health and well-being. So I think they give the medical system more license. For innovating, I don't just mean you know experimental medic medicine where they're trying out new drugs and things. I mean, you know, uh, license to organize differently, to you know fund things differently, to think differently about um, you know how they respond to uh, public health issues because people are so concerned and 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 so there's a kind of well, yeah, you know, if we could, if our health can be better, or if keeping going on like this makes our health worse. Uh, yeah, we need change, and we're prepared to support change. Um, so you can get sort of massive system, I mean, Medicare coming in as one of those clear system changing games in Canada. You know, they've had a lot more trouble in the U.S., but, you know, they are even changing there because it's, a, it's an arena where ultimately people, you know, are clear. They want to be, have better health. They want to live longer. They want a more responsive service, and it's, you know, they, that gives more room to change there. I think that you know parents have very different expectations of the system, and and they're unrealistic. I mean, either you have an illness or you don't have an illness. Either you're treated or you're not treated. Uh, but you know, whether you have a wonderful education or a poor education doesn't differentiate well enough between the people who go on to be enormous success stories and ones that don't. So let's just assume, which I know isn't true. That every parent was saying that we want, you know, our children to be uh, brilliant professionals in something or other. Well, there's temperament that intervenes in that. You know, there's there's family culture that intervenes in that. There's community culture. There's luck. There's you know a number of things that have to combine to create that. It's not just the educational system. But then on top of that, you don't have everybody wanting that for their children. You know, other, other cultures or other groups want their children to be hardworking and responsible. They don't care if they're brilliant. And, and so they, you know, they look to the system to provide that good. You know, others just want them to keep the kids off the streets or, you know, out of the home so that they can do other things. Uh, and we, they want them not to do drugs. They want them not to engage in, in negative activities. Um, they want them to, you know, take care of some of the emotional or or physical needs that they can't take care of. So you have multiple different expectations of the school system, uh, which are more complex in terms of the general public and what they want than you have in the medical system. 
And, and so I'm not saying it's easy in the medical system, but it's interesting that you, you, you get a lot of, of continuous change in that system. And so, you know, if you go towards trying to realize one end of the continuum, you have other people who are unhappy. Uh, and and there's, there's enormous public pressure uh, uh, that, you know, their expectations of their child be delivered. And, and it's, you know, not a you know, like medical system, you can't keep everybody alive. People get tumors and they die of them, much as everyone would like to live, right? But it's a little more clear cut. Mm -hmm. And I think those expectations and the political uh, and the fact that it, education is public and by and large public, so you, it has to go through the, the um, filter of, of politics and people running for election and getting elected and playing to their constituents uh, means that it's, it, you know, it's a really long feedback loop between, you know, what the public wants and what the education system has to gear up to provide. We, we are not, we study and are interested in dynamics that are somewhat different from the kind of classic social movement thing where you, you know, you have an obstacle, you've got the status quo, it's the enemy, you organize against it, you overthrow it, and everything's different. Our experience of a successful social innovation is that it happens, it bubbles up in different ways in different places, and then sometimes these recombine and spread, and sometimes they don't. When they recombine and spread, sometimes they stay at the same sort of level. They don't affect the whole system. Sometimes, a, you know, opportunity or disturbance can happen, and if you have a, a completely different way of doing things, you can suddenly cascade and create the whole system. You know, if something, uh, you know, you you think of a place like Haiti that's gone through a terrible disaster. Well, if you'd had a lot of experimentation going on in education there that were pretty well developed, it might be an opportunity for starting a whole different kind of school system there because there's been an unfortunate but huge sort of create destruction, which could be creative or could be impoverishing, could be a chronic disaster trap. You don't know yet. So, so their opportunities happen, things open up, uh, and, and allow some innovations to move, uh, but they have to be ready. And, and you need a kind of a mindset which is always looking for that, you know, which has ten irons in a fire and then, okay, so-and-so has just been elected, you know, we've had this crisis over here that, you know, the public has moved to saying, you know, somehow schools have to change. This person's come in, they're interested in school change. Here's our opportunity to move this piece forward uh, and, and to make it different.